Imagine waking up one day and realizing that everything you see, hear, and believe might be a lie, that the reality you experience every second isn't the objective truth, but something your brain has constructed, a filtered version of the world filled with distortions, illusions, and gaps. We like to believe that our senses give us an accurate picture of reality, but the truth is your brain is constantly editing, filling in missing details, and distorting what you perceive. Your vision lies to you. Your memory rewrites itself every time you recall it. Your decisions are made before you're even aware of them. This isn't science fiction, it's neuroscience. Think about the last time you had an argument with someone over a simple event, maybe what was said in a conversation, the color of an object, or even what day something happened. You remember it clearly, but they insist they recall it differently. Who's right? The answer is both of you and neither, because the truth is you're not actually remembering the event itself, you're remembering your brain's interpretation of it. Now, extend that idea beyond memory. What if your entire experience of reality is just an interpretation shaped by your brain's biases, assumptions, and limits? Every sight, sound, touch, and thought isn't raw data from the world. It's your brain's best guess. Here's a shocking truth to begin with. Your brain is not a camera. We often assume our eyes work like cameras, recording everything around us in perfect detail. But this is completely false. Your brain doesn't passively absorb reality. It constructs it from fragmented information. If our senses were perfect, we'd be able to notice every detail around us. But in reality, you don't perceive most of what's happening in front of you. A famous study known as the Invisible Gorilla Experiment proved this in a shocking way. In the experiment, participants watched a video of people passing a basketball. They were told to count how many times the ball was passed. Halfway through the video, a man in a full gorilla suit walked across the screen, waved, and left. Over 50% of participants never saw the gorilla, even though it was right in front of them, because their brains filtered it out. This proves a terrifying truth. You don't see everything around you, you only see what your brain thinks is important, but not only what you see, what you hear, remember, and believe isn't reality itself, it's your brain's version of reality. This is just the beginning of understanding how your brain deceives you. Watch till the end, we'll dive into optical illusions, false memories, and the illusion of free will, all of which prove that your perception of the world is far from reality. So how your brain actually creates reality. As we said, every second you are not experiencing raw reality. You are experiencing your brain's version of it. Your brain doesn't just process the present, it predicts it. Instead of interpreting reality in real time, it generates expectations based on past experiences, biases, and assumptions. Neuroscientists call this predictive processing. Have you ever heard your phone ring only to check and realize it never did? Your brain was predicting a sound that wasn't there. Also, when reading a messy or blurred text, you still see the words clearly. That's because your brain is filling in the gaps. Your perception isn't pure data, it's a construct of what your brain expects to be there. In other hand, your perception of reality is shaped by what you already believe. This is called confirmation bias. Your brain modifies perception to fit what you expect to be true. If you believe someone is rude, you'll notice every time they act slightly impolite, but ignore their kindness. If you believe the world is dangerous, your brain will focus on threats and ignore safety. If you're convinced you saw something a certain way, your brain will refuse to accept evidence proving otherwise. Your expectations don't just influence what you notice, they influence what you experience. In some cases, they can even override reality itself. Your brain doesn't stop there, it fills in what's missing, your eyes can't take in everything, your ears don't hear all frequencies, your senses have limits. So your brain fills in the gaps with best guesses. Here's some examples you can try to understand the process. There's the phantom word illusion. If you play a scrambled, unclear audio clip, your brain will insert words that aren't there based on what you expect to hear. Another example is the Kinesa Triangle illusion. You can see a triangle that doesn't exist just because your brain fills in the missing lines. You can also try the blurred face phenomenon. If you glance at a blurry face and then sharpen your focus, your brain might create details that weren't actually there. This happens because your brain doesn't like uncertainty. 
If it detects incomplete information, it simply fills in the blanks, whether the information is real or not. Your reality is part fact, part fabrication. Have you ever heard two people describe the same event completely differently? It's not because one is lying, it's because each brain creates a different version of reality. One person remembers the emotion of the event more than the facts, another person remembers the details but forgets how they felt, someone else fills in missing gaps with assumptions. Your experience of life is not objective, it's personal, and this has huge implications. It means your emotions shape what you see, your beliefs modify how you remember things, you and another person may never fully share the same reality. Reality, as you know it, is unique to you. By now you understand that your brain doesn't show you reality, it constructs it. But what happens when this construction completely fails? That's what optical illusions reveal. They aren't just fun tricks, they expose the flaws in your brain's processing. They prove that what you see isn't always real. Let's break down why your brain falls for illusions and how this affects your perception of the world. Your brain is designed to process vast amounts of information instantly. Every second, your brain is bombarded with 11 million bits of information, but it can only consciously process about 40 bits at a time. So what does it do with the rest? It filters, fills in gaps, and creates a simplified version of reality. Sometimes it does this to protect you. If you had to notice every single detail in your environment, your brain would be overloaded. That's why you don't notice the feeling of your clothes on your skin unless you focus on it. That's why you don't notice subtle background noises in a cafe until someone points them out. That's why you see motion blur in fast moving objects. Your brain smooths out rapid changes in perception. Most of the time, these shortcuts help us function, but sometimes, they create distortions. Take a look at this famous illusion, the checker shadow illusion. A checkerboard with a shadow over part of it that shows how your brain warps colors. Two squares, A and B, appear to be different colors, but in reality, they are the exact same shade. Why does this happen? Your brain automatically corrects for lighting. It assumes that shadows darken objects, so it lightens the shaded area. This means that your perception of color isn't based on the actual color, it's based on context. Also, your brain misjudges size. You can notice it through the miller liar illusion, two lines with opposite arrows on each end. One looks longer, but they are actually the same size. Your brain interprets depth and perspective based on its experience in a 3D world. It assumes certain angles mean distance, which changes how you see size. This illusion proves that you don't just see objects, you interpret them based on past experience. Your brain doesn't stop there. It creates motion that isn't there, and it makes you see faces in random objects. You probably experienced it as many images that shows those illusions were posted on social media. For those who didn't, there's the rotating snake's illusion the rotating snake's illusion tricks the brain into seeing motion where there is none. Concerning the face illusion, it's called pareidolia, your brain's tendency to find patterns even where none exist. Your brain is wired to detect faces for survival. It's so good at this that it creates faces where there aren't any. This is why people see religious figures in toast, monsters in shadows, or even ghosts in random light reflections. Your brain isn't seeing reality, it's creating meaning from randomness. Optical illusions have real world consequences, like eyewitness could fail a testimony when their brain filled in missing details incorrectly, or in traffic accidents, people misjudge speed, distance, and motion due to predictive errors in perception, and that's what all magicians work on in their shows. They exploit brain shortcuts to make you see things that aren't there. Your entire life is shaped by these illusions, you just don't notice it. So far, we've seen how your brain distorts reality in real time, but what if I told you it also rewrites your past? Your memory is not a recording of events. It's a reconstruction, and every time you recall something, you change it. This is where the Mandela Effect comes in, a bizarre phenomenon where large groups of people remember things that never happened. The name comes from Nelson Mandela. Many people distinctly recall him dying in prison in the 1980s, but that never happened. He was released and later became president of South Africa. Yet thousands of people swear they remember news coverage of his death decades earlier. How can so many people be wrong about the same event? 
Are our memories being altered, or is this proof of parallel realities? The answer lies in how your brain stores and retrieves memories. The Mandela effect isn't just about Mandela. There are countless examples of false memories shared by millions. There's the Berenstain Bears versus Berenstain Bears. Many people swear the children's book series was called Berenstain Bears with an E, but in reality, it's always been Berenstain Bears with an A. Even people who grew up with the books insist their childhood copies said Berenstain. Also, there's the Monopoly Man's missing monocle. Does the Monopoly Man have a monocle? Many people remember him wearing one, but he never has. Your brain associates him with the Pringles mascot and other old-fashioned characters, so it adds a monocle that was never there. Another example is the misquoted line, Luke, I am your father. Darth Vader never says, Luke, I am your father. In Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, he actually says, no, I am your father, but millions remember it differently. Why? Because our brains simplify information and create the most memorable version of events. The Mandela effect happens because your memory is not a recording, it's a reconstruction. Every time you recall something, your brain rewrites it. Your memories are influenced by suggestion. If many people believe a false fact, your brain may adopt it as real. Your brain fills in missing details. If you don't fully remember something, your brain invents details that make sense. Group memory is contagious. You are more likely to believe false information if others also believe it. Your brain is always editing, filtering, and changing your past without you realizing it. The Mandela effect is part of a bigger issue, false memories. Psychologists have conducted experiments proving that people can remember things that never happened. Like the Lost in the Mall experiment, researchers planted a fake childhood memory in participants being lost in a mall as a child. At first, the participants didn't recall it, but after repeated questioning, 25% of them remembered it happening, complete with details that were never given. That means your brain can create entire memories that feel real, even if they're 100% false. If our memories constantly change, how much of our past is real? How much of your childhood do you truly remember? Are some of your strongest memories actually altered versions of the truth? If two people remember the same event differently, who is right? The unsettling truth is nobody. Your brain isn't storing facts. It's telling a story, and that means your past isn't as real as you think it is. Up to this point, we've seen how your brain distorts reality in real time, and even rewrites your past without you realizing it. But what if I told you that your brain also makes decisions before you're even aware of them? What if free will, the feeling that you are consciously making choices, is just an illusion? This isn't only philosophy, it's neuroscience. If you want more details about the illusion of free will, you can check my channel and watch the video entitled, Are You Really In Control? I talked about the Benjamin Liebet experiment, which proves how your brain decides before you do. Researchers measured the brain activity of a group of people while asking them to move their hands. Their brains showed activity to move their hand before they were aware of making the decision. This meant that the decision was already made before the person even felt like they had made a choice. This experiment suggests a shocking possibility. Free will might be an illusion. Your brain makes decisions, and then your conscious mind simply takes credit for them. It means your brain acts before you are aware of your decision. Your feeling of choosing something is just an afterthought. You are not as in control of your thoughts and actions as you think. And it gets even more disturbing. In 2008, neuroscientist John Dylan Haynes took the Libet experiment even further. Participants were placed in an fMRI scanner and told to press a button with their left or right hand whenever they wanted, but this time, scientists could predict which hand they would choose before the person even knew. Up to seven seconds before the person decided, their brain activity revealed the choice. What does this mean? It means your brain already made the decision before you consciously chose anything. Your feeling of control is just your brain catching up to its own subconscious decisions. This raises disturbing questions. If your brain makes choices before you do, are you actually in control? If scientists can predict your decisions before you're aware of them, is free will an illusion? If your thoughts bubble up from unconscious processes, then who or what is really making the decisions? Many scientists now believe that most of our daily actions are subconscious. Think about your daily routine. 
Do you consciously choose what foot to step with first? Do you carefully decide how to brush your teeth? Did you think about breathing before I just mentioned it? Most of what we do is automatic. Your brain runs on habits, instincts, and past patterns, and only occasionally involves conscious decision making. This is why you can drive a car for miles and forget the last few minutes. Your brain was on autopilot. The question is, how much of your life is running on subconscious scripts instead of real choices? Does free will exist at all? The idea that we are in control of our thoughts, choices, and actions is deeply comforting, but modern neuroscience challenges that idea. This leads to two major perspectives. The soft determinist view. Yes, your brain acts subconsciously, but you still have the ability to influence behavior over time by shaping habits and responses. And the hard determinist view that says, no, free will is an illusion. Your brain follows a chain of cause and effect that you have no control over. But now comes the biggest question of all. If your brain constructs everything you experience, then what is real? Is reality something objective and external, or is it just a mental projection inside your mind? Neuroscientists and philosophers alike struggle with this question, but modern research suggests a shocking possibility. Reality, as you know it, is a controlled hallucination. Neuroscientist Anil Seth argues that we don't passively experience the world, we generate it. That's the theory of predictive perception, which means reality is a brain simulation. Your brain doesn't receive raw data from the outside world. It constructs a mental model of what it expects reality to be. Your senses aren't windows to reality. They're just inputs that your brain interprets based on predictions. That means you aren't seeing the world as it is. You're seeing it as your brain expects it to be. This is why optical illusions work. Your brain predicts something wrongly, and that prediction overrides reality. Here's something to think about. Is your red the same as my red? We assume that colors exist in the real world, but in reality, color is just a creation of the brain. Wavelengths of light are interpreted as color. Some animals see more colors than us. Others see none at all. This means that color doesn't objectively exist. It's just a mental experience. And if something as fundamental as color isn't real, what else is just a projection? Quantum physics takes this even further. The observer effect suggests that particles behave differently when being watched. In experiments like the double slit experiment, electrons exist in a state of probability until they are observed, at which point they take a definite form. This suggests that the act of observing something changes its state. What does this mean for reality? Could it be that the world around us only takes shape because we are perceiving it? If so, then does anything exist when we aren't looking at it? Elon Musk and many scientists suggest that our universe could be a simulation. The laws of physics are mathematical, just like a computer program. Our brains operate like biological computers processing data. If simulations become advanced enough, a simulated reality would feel identical to a real one. If we were inside a simulation, how would we know? And if reality is just data being processed by a greater intelligence, then is there any such thing as real existence? If our perception, memory, choices, and even the world itself are illusions, then what does that mean for how we live? Should we even care about the truth? If everything is just perception, does meaning exist? Does this knowledge free us? Or does it make life feel meaningless? Here's probably the answer. Reality doesn't have to be real to be meaningful. Even if everything is an illusion, what we experience still matters. And if your reality is a projection of your mind, then you have more power than you think. You may never know if what you experience is truly real. But maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe what matters is how you choose to experience it. And maybe, just maybe, the only reality that matters is the one you create for yourself.